Hello everyone, Kodadi here, and I am an Adinavasi at Nithyananda Pitam Bengaluru Adinam. I live here with my guru, Paramahamsa Nithyananda, and also with hundreds of other Adinavasis. Some of us are, some, some of the Adinavasis here have taken sannyas, which is a monastic vow. Some are living here with their spouses and their children, living as married couples as family. And some of us are like me, just interested in living this lifestyle and have taken, you know, a vow, an Adinavasi vow to, you know, live by certain principles, um, but we have not taken monastic vows. And so, yeah, here I am. I have never talked about this before with really anyone. It's something I've kept very private, but I have a PTSD diagnosis. I was diagnosed in 2015, and I have probably had it for much, much longer. Now, in 2014 and 2015, I had a series of events happen uh, for events in particular that were really traumatic and it took a year to get a diagnosis because people kept telling me it was grief and I thought that it was just grief but it was definitely not just grief I was having a lot of symptoms that were not grief in particular um, there were a lot of nightmares a lot of ongoing nightmares that I was having and uh, one of the worst symptoms, I think, was the depersonalization, derealization, dissociation, where I was not connecting with the world around me, where I felt like I was not in my body, uh, to the extent that uh, at one point in time, I didn't know if I was alive or dead. And there was another time where I was not connecting with my body and I had to I stood in the bathroom mirror with a razor blade in my hand and I was cutting my face trying to connect what I was seeing with what I was feeling and trying to feel like the person I was looking at in the mirror was me. I was at that level of dissociation. I would wander around aimlessly and have no idea where I was even though it was a familiar neighborhood. Things like that. It was it was pretty bad. I think the dissociation was the worst. Um, you know, the flashbacks were bad too. But well, I guess the flashbacks and dissociation kind of went together. But anyway, it was bad. It was really really bad. And so, what can you do about that? I mean, I went through treatment. I went and I I tried all these different prescriptions. I think I went through about six different prescriptions and all of them, the side effects were too severe that I was not able to continue taking any of them. I was in therapy. I went through a process called EMDR. EMDR was actually very helpful. That one I do recommend. That helped me a lot. But, you know, it was just not going away. My symptoms were a lot less, but I was still having a lot of problems. I felt completely dysfunctional. I was unable to hold down a job. I started walking dogs because that was the only sort of job I could manage to do. I was selling my art. And I was just, I could not go out in public. I could not speak to my friends. I was not involved in life at all. I would just sit in my bed and have anxiety and depression and dissociation and nightmares and I felt really powerless and helpless to do anything. So now here I am making YouTube videos and I'm living in a dorm in this sort of uh, like, I don't know, barracks style dorm where there's a big room with a bunch of bunk beds and we're all living there. Um, there's a lot of people here. There's several hundred people that live on this campus that I am interacting with. I am in crowded meditation halls, I am in crowded yoga classes, I am in crowded dining halls. Um, the workspace that I have, it's this open workspace where, where we are sitting at shared tables. So I am, 
I'm in contact with a lot of people that a year ago I would not have been able to do this. A year ago I would not have been able to make YouTube videos. A year ago I would not have been able to hold down a job. A year ago I would not have flown to India. I would not have gotten on a plane. And it was a long plane ride too from California to India. And so what changed? Well, so I went through the EMDR and I really pushed myself to be here, to be with the guru, to go through this Adina Vasi training program because, I mean, I, did, I wasn't living a life. I was laying in bed, I was watching Star Trek, I was reading the internet, and that was it. I would go out and walk dogs, I would do some sewing or some drawing or painting, you know, I read some books, but I was not living life and I knew it and I was miserable and I couldn't sleep at night. I had incredible pain. I had chronic fatigue. You know, my, my life was a mess, really. And so I come here and I go through the training program. One of the most important things is this third eye awakening and this ability to manifest uh, these traditional yogic powers called shaktis. And in order to be able to have the third eye awakening and to be able to use these powers, you have to really clean out your inner space and have a very clear mind and also a very strong, clear body as well. Yeah, so the guru, Paramahamsa Nityananda, will give this initiation to anyone and everyone that comes for these programs, for the Inner Awakening program. But it's up to you to be able to use it. It's up to how well you go through these other introspection processes, how well you keep up with the yoga practices, and yeah, how, how well you keep up with that allows you to further manifest these powers. <laughs> So, first of all, the yoga, this, you know, these physical practices, not only of the yoga asanas, but also the, like, the yogic cleansing processes, like we use a neti pod, and there's some different herbal things that we take, and we do an eye wash, and an enema, and, you know, these are all very traditional yoga practices to help clean the body. The food that we eat is organic, and it is very traditional, so... The food is, you know, it's vegetarian as well, so it's, it's very clean. Um, there's no, no toxic things, there's no plastic, there's no chemicals in it. Uh, so that keeps the body very clean. And of course yoga to keep the body strong. And it, the yoga and these yogic practices have helped so, so much with my pain and my fatigue. I am doing rope yoga, traditional Malakamba rope yoga, which I never imagined possible, but I went, we all had to go and try it, and so I went and I sincerely tried it, and I did terrible, but I loved it anyway. So I have been doing the yoga, the rope yoga, I will find some pictures when I get some pictures of myself doing it. Um, that has helped so much with my chronic pain. Um, I really, I still get a little bit achy, but it's not like how it used to be where I was regularly at, you know, a level 6 out of 10 pain level on a daily basis. Um, and I'm no longer in so much pain that I'm unable to sleep. I'm sleeping at night, which was something that was a struggle before. So, you know, these yogic health practices have helped so, so much with, you know, these symptoms of PTSD and also with the, you know, the beliefs that I had about my body and my ability. I, I was struggling with the rope yoga because uh, you use your feet to climb and my feet have been swollen because of mosquito bites. So I have been unable to climb the rope or really use my feet with rope yoga. And so the rope yoga teacher's like, oh, you know, just sit on the ground and practice with your upper body. I'm like, well, okay, I'll give it a try. It sounded weird. But I had an amazing, amazing 
breakthrough. I have no upper body strength. Most of my rope yoga strength was coming from my feet and from climbing, but not being able to use my feet, I really had to focus on my upper body and I was able to pull myself up just with my arms, which was something I don't, I mean, I don't think I've been able to do that since I was probably like six or seven years old. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. And it just, it just made me feel like I was physically able to do this and that so much was possible physically that I didn't have to worry about the pain or the fatigue anymore, that I could really do more with my body than I thought I could. It, it's just been amazing. It was such an amazing breakthrough and I'd been in the easy yoga class and now I'm in the, the regular yoga class again here. So, and I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up with it. I'm so excited and I'm so happy. So yeah, that's just part of, that, that's just what the physical yoga practices have done for my PTSD. The introspective meditation practices have given me a whole new level of ability um, just to function in life and function in the world. I'll go into that later because that's that's a long one. That's a really long one. But you know, doing these practices to awaken the third eye and be able to use the powers of the third eye have just done wonders for my PTSD. And I don't know if I would be diagnosed with PTSD anymore. I don't have a psychiatrist or a therapist here. Uh, there's no one to diagnose me or undiagnose me with it, and I honestly don't care. I don't think it matters. Um, so yeah, next video I will tell you about more of the introspective practices and how they have helped. Okay, Nithinandam.